Hey everyone, and welcome back to some more uh, Subnautica. In the last episode, we went down to the Lost River. Um, went and checked out what was going on there. Uh, so this episode, we're going to be gathering... Um, oops, she said that pretty hard there, didn't I? Uh, we're going to be gathering some more uh, materials in order to get ready to go move our base to the Lost River there. And this episode is a little bit different than any other that, I, uh, that I've ever done. I'm actually doing post-commentary on this one. Um, basically what happened is I, I was going to do a lot of this off-screen, but then I saw this wreck and I saw this data box and I thought to myself, well, I want to show this on camera. Turns out this data box is something we already had. So at this point I was like, well, do I just stop the recording now? Or But then I thought to myself, you know what? I'm probably going to be uh, in the process of getting materials. I'm probably going to be getting the um, fragments for stuff that I still need anyway. So I decided to record the whole thing. Uh, this torpedo arm is another thing I got here. I think this was the last fragment we needed for it. Yep. Um, so I decided, why not? I'll record the whole thing of me gathering resources, going around getting these fragments, then I can edit it down and post a commentator over, over it. Which I am glad I did, although it was a bit of a chore because once I stopped the recording, I realized I was at two hours. Yes, I <laughs> for two hours I basically spent wandering around gathering materials and fragments. Um, and I did, as you can see, manage to edit that down pretty well, um, down to 27 minutes. But uh, in any case, yeah, this is more of me just checking out this wreck, seeing if there's any... I actually don't know what biome this counts for. This might be a sparse reef wreck, I think, technically, because we're actually pretty close to that. We're basically on, like, the southern end of the entrance to the Blood Kelp Zone, that trench, um, and I'm trying to, so this, that would be right where the southern, sorry, that would be right where the Sparse Reef meets, what biome would that even be, the dunes, I guess, but I think this counts as a Sparse Reef wreck. Uh, I'm not too sure about that, though. Um, so at this point, uh, one of the things I really wanted to gather was a lot of the uranium crystals. I pointed them out briefly. Um, so I went down to the, uh, blood kelp zone here to gather those. They're kind of just all along the walls. And while I was down here, I noticed something. And this made me really glad I was recording. You know, see this little thing here? Yeah, this is actually a time capsule, which I haven't talked about yet. Because this is actually the first time I've ever found one. Uh, but time capsules are actually from other people who have played the game. Now, Subnautica is on a multiplayer game, but basically the way that it works is at the end of the game, you can set up a time capsule if you want, and put some items in it, and yeah, leave a message or and even a picture for people who find it. Uh, so this is from another player. Um, and what he ended up giving me from this time capsule is a bunch of the cool little fun stuff like the Aurora Machine, that arcade gorge toy, which I've actually never seen before in the game. I don't know where you get that. Um... And a, a water bottle. And I'm glad that's what we ended up getting from the time capsule. Because sometimes people will put, like, all the tools and stuff. Or a bunch of late game stuff. Um, and that can kind of break the game a little bit. Depending on when you find the time capsule. So, I'm glad we found a fun little one like that. Uh, speaking of toys, there's also... In one of the life pods, I think the one in the crag field, the last one we got, there's actually a little Markiplier doll that I missed there. Uh, I'm not going to go back for it. Uh, just because I don't really feel like going back for it, but uh, yeah, they put a little Markiplier bobblehead in the game, which is kind of neat, I guess. I don't know. I don't. I've watched Markiplier like a little bit. Um, I mean, it seems like a fine dude. It's not. It's not my style of let's play that I like to watch. Um, so in any case, yeah, this is me. Okay, coming back to the base here. I think this is where I start putting stuff together for those uh, Cyclops and Prawn Suit uh, expansions here. Um, yeah, this is me looking at the toys again here. Um, oh yeah, and then I remember I was thinking like, you know, what the hell, he didn't give me another Keep Calm poster? Like, I was a little bit upset about that, but, you know, beggars can't be choosers, really. And I, you know, at least I was not, at least I was fortunate enough to find a time capsule, uh, in the Let's Play. And I, I'm, like I said, I'm really glad for that, because I've never found one, uh, when, when playing just on my own. So, if I'm gonna find my first time capsule, I'm glad it's here. Um... Oh, and the radio message, that's right. Oh, well, that's nice, I suppose. Well, the, the PDA couldn't even really translate that one, huh? Um, yeah, and then I, I come over here and, like, nervously look out the hatch. Because I'm like, are they closing in on me? 
Oh, there was a picture. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then here I was like, was there a little bit more to that message? I mean, it looks like there should be, but you only get a little bit of audio there. Um, looks like we have another... I'm actually watching this on the timeline of my editor, so it's a little bit jumpy for me. Um, looks like we have another edit coming in here. Yeah, this is where I put away... Oh, yeah, because I started gathering materials here, and I wanted to just cut until... Um, I was ready to gather stuff, but okay, so this is where we're actually going to get the battery charger, which I really should have gotten a long time ago. Uh, we did get a power cell charger on screen, but the, uh, battery charger is found out here in, um, in, why can't I think of the name of this biome? The Grassy Plateau, that's it, the Grassy Plateau Rex. Uh, so I pretty much just swam straight, straight away from my base and found one right away. Um... Yeah, we're cutting into the door here, and let's see, there's like, I think, three other things that get on screen. Now, I will tell you right now, there was something I meant to get on screen here that I accidentally got off screen, and that was, those were the fragments for the uh, reinforced diving suit. Uh, you might remember when we tried to go lower uh, below the Lost River, we couldn't because we were, just started taking fire damage just from being in that water. Uh, well, the reinforced diving suit will actually... Um, prevent that heat damage, as well as cutting all other damage you take by 50%, which is really nice. Now, like I said, I meant to get that on screen during this little, uh, collection, you know, video here, this, like, gathering video here, uh, but I forgot to do that, and I ended up doing it off screen by accident, so that's my bad on that, but basically where we found it, where I found it was a wreck in the bulb zone. We've actually been to that wreck. It was, uh, well, the one time on camera we've been to the bulb zone, we were right near our wreck, uh, and if you, uh, laser cut into that wreck and then kind of like swim through a couple of corridors and go like to the bottom of the wreck near the sea floor you'll find a data box that has the reinforced diving suit uh data in it so that's why i got that so at the start of the next video you'll see me with that suit already on uh just letting you know uh so you're not too confused there but yeah we cut our way into here and this is where we managed to find a data box i think for something we already had yep uh as well as our first battery charger fragment there uh, the battery charger is actually super useful. I don't know why I didn't think to get this earlier in the game. Um, unlike the power cell charger, which... The power cell charger isn't even really that necessary, since your moon pool is more or less a power cell charger. Uh, one thing you can do if you don't have that uh, the power cell charger is you can just, like... And if you've got a dead power cell, you can just dock your your Seamoth or Prawn Suit into the Moon Pool, and then swap out whatever Power Cells are in it for your dead one, and the Moon Pool will just charge that back up to full. So, it's kind of a... Uh, I don't know, it's not completely pointless. So it's definitely more convenient than using the Moon Pool, but uh, not very necessary. Um, and as far as batteries go, admittedly they're easy enough to make, uh, that they're not like... it's not super necessary to have a battery charger, but again, it's more convenient. Uh, you see we find the second fragment here. So now we got that all taken care of. Um, after this, I think we went to the... Did we go to the Blood Kelp Zone or the Grand Reef next? I'm trying to remember. Uh, looks like it was back to the Blood Kelp Zone. Yeah, I wanted to find a wreck here so that I could find um, some of the remaining uh, prawn suit arms. Uh, now, this wreck in particular is pretty close to the entrance of the Lost River. I was actually looking for that bigger wreck that I very casually pointed out and then didn't go check out a couple of... Maybe it was last video. It was either last video or a couple of videos ago. Um, was, yeah, those Uranite crystals, again, they're just all over the walls here, so... Um, but yeah, we also found the nuclear reactor fragments here, which is another thing I was looking for. Uh, that's how we're going to power our Lost River bases, but with a nuclear reactor. We could use a thermal reactor, um... But I just find the nuclear one to be a lot less of a hassle. If you try to use the thermal... I mean, it's not that much more of a hassle to use a thermal reactor. But the thing is, then you have to set up power nodes um, and make a line basically from the heat source to your base. And the nuclear reactor gives you more power anyway, so I figured I'll just use that. There's, like, no reason not to. Uh, I believe we picked up the, yeah, the drill arm here is where we found all the fragments for that. Um, I was hoping to find the grappling arm here, too. Those are the basically the main two arms I want to use on the prawn suit. It's the drill arm and the grappling arm. 
Uh, but unfortunately, this particular wreck only had nuclear reactor fragments and drill arms. Um, still good that we got both of those there, but we did have to go to another wreck in order to get the uh, grappling arm. Um, and I believe that other wreck we ended up going to was in the Grand Reef. I, I don't... I'm looking at the timeline. I think that's what we did next, but I'm not super duper sure. Um, yeah, I was curious if this sulfur would hurt me. Oh, no, no, the next thing we did was go down to the Lost River for more resource gathering. That's right. Yeah, I was curious if that sulfur there would hurt me. It turns out it doesn't, but, uh, other green sulfur pools in the Lost River will hurt you. So you want to be careful for that. Um, okay, yeah, here we are resource gathering. Now, this is going to be a big case of do as I say, not as I do, because here I'm looking for sulfur, the yellow sulfur crystals, and I'm gathering them just about the dumbest way you possibly can. Basically, I'm going down into the sulfur into, with my Seamoth, which is damaging it, to look for them, and then I'm hovering above them and pointing straight down to them with my Seamoth, because I'm basically going to make a mad dash in there myself to go gather them, which is going to damage your character. You definitely don't want to do that. Yeah. Like I said, do as I say, not as I do. This is not how you want to gather crystalline sulfur. Um, really, you can just come down here with the prawn suit, um, and the prawn suit's normal arms will be able to pick stuff up for you. So the prawn suit, I believe, also takes much less damage than the Seamoth does while it's in the Sulphur. It might not even take any damage at all, I don't remember. But, uh, yeah, definitely just want to come down here with that Prawn Suit and use that to grab the Sulphur. Do not do what I'm doing here. I really only did this because I was being impatient. Um, yeah, you see I found another Crystal and Sulphur. I ended up gathering three all together for, I believe, one of the Prawn Suit upgrades? I think it was one of the Depth one. No, I think it was actually the Jump. Uh, the prawn suit's jump is what takes the sulfur. But yeah, you see me trying to line up my Seamoth, so I'm pointing right at it. Because you don't want to spend any unnecessary time here. Um, yeah, I only, like I said, I only did it this way because I was being impatient. Definitely don't do it this way when you're playing. Uh, I would highly advise against that. Because yeah, I'm just having to stop and heal and also repair my Seamoth. Um... All in the middle of doing that. So I showed myself getting two of them. I actually got the third one shortly after. I really could have left it in, but I ended up not doing that. Um, let's see what we've got in that. Oh, yeah. So this part, I wanted to show that these guys... I didn't really show these creatures off. Um, these are kind of the bone sharks of the Lost River, although they're not nearly as aggressive or... Well, in, in not being as aggressive, they're not as annoying. Uh, I think they're called Silver Snakes? I really don't remember. Shoot, I really should have looked that up. It's something snake. I don't recall off the top of my head, though. Um, but uh, while I was over here, I actually ended up finding another alien structure that I totally forgot about. I, I did end up forgetting about this one, mostly because there's not really a lot to it. This is a sunken alien structure, uh, and it's wrecked, so you can't get inside it. Um, but I still just kind of wanted to show off that it was here. Um, I don't really remember which part of the Lost... Yeah, the PDA even tells you that. Hey, this one collapsed to the sea floor, so you can't get inside it at all. Ah, uh, there's a warper around, too. Um, hmm. That's pretty mysterious there. And again, you can see I'm doing my circling trick around the warper, and eventually he just gave up and left. Um... Now, there is something else that ended up coming up here. I'm going to be a little quiet for this part. And we're just looking around, and then... Yeah, did you hear that roar? I might end up boosting the audio in post. But we'll hear it again a couple of times. Um... Yeah, there it is again. You can see it. It actually sounds a lot like the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. I've always thought anyway. Um, so much like when we were in the Jelly Shroom Caves, you might... Re okay, there it is again. I just wanted that there was... I knew it played one more time. I wanted you to be able to hear it again. Um, yeah, you might recall when we were, like... On the floor of the Jelly Shroom Caves, you could hear a roaring down there. Um, that was actually a ghost leviathan that's here in the Lost River. Um, you can actually hear th leviathans roaring from biomes that are below you. So, 
That is actually something that's even below the Lost River, something we might be seeing in the next video. Um, we'll see it pretty shortly either way, but uh, hmm, more on that later. Um, yeah, so this is me gathering materials to start making those upgrades. Excuse me. And um, yeah, we're going to go do that now over here at the uh, vehicle upgrade console and the modification station. Uh, one thing to know is that um, you actually can't make Cyclops upgrades from this uh, ve vehicle upgrade console. I can't think of the words there. Um, you actually have to make Cyclops upgrades from the Cyclops itself. Uh, which I think I totally forgot until here. And yeah, you see me swimming out to the Cyclops. Um, actually, I'm looking at the timeline. I do, I did actually show this. I remember that now. Um, so yep, yeah, it's a little bit inconvenient, but it's not too bad. Uh, also, the vehicle upgrade console that's on the Cyclops, I believe, does not have its own fabricator. So you actually... Now, I don't know this for sure, but I think you might actually have to make your own vehicle upgrade console in a base to actually make upgrades for the Seamoth and the Prawn suit there. Um, and then this is where you would slot the upgrades for the Cyclops there. Uh, this is actually me looking for the, the fabricator for the Cyclops upgrades. Yeah, I thought it was over here for a moment, but eventually I remember, yeah, it's actually going to be on the left side here, on the left wall. Um, yep, here it is, right here. So yep, with that we get the first Cyclops depth upgrade. I think the Cyclops only has two depth upgrades, if I remember correctly. Um, whereas the Prawn Suit, like the Seamoth, has three. So the first... Uh, oh yeah, this is funny, me walking on air there. Um, <laughs> just a little fun little graphical glitch in the game, I suppose. Um, yeah, so the first Cyclops depth upgrade, as well as the second Prawn Suit one, are both going to allow us to go down to 1,300 meters. Um... I'm still kind of undecided if I'm going to take the Cyclops down any further, because I've said this before, I don't really like driving the Cyclops, it's it's huge, it's a pain to maneuver, it's really not worth it, and there are actually other reasons that I don't want to take it that much further down, uh, much further down the Lost River, so, um, now at this point, I have actually moved my base already, uh, I don't know if I should have said that, but we'll see it in the next video anyway, yeah, at this point, at the time of recording this audio, I have moved my base already. I did do that off screen, so sorry if you wanted to see that. It really wasn't that exciting. Uh, basically, it just involved me going back and forth a lot between my base, deconstructing everything, moving everything onto the Cyclops, and then very slowly making my way down the Lost River, checking all the multiple cameras multiple times, and it just wasn't very entertaining. And I know if I would have commentated over, for it, over it, um, all my commentary would have been was like, Okay, want to be careful here. Uh, nudge around this walk. Okay, let's advance slowly. Watch out for things. Um, nothing exciting really happened. Oh, this is me trying to figure out where you access the prawn suit's upgrades. It's actually, yeah, from the left side there. Um, yeah, like I said, the commentary wouldn't have been that great anyway, so I just did it off screen. Um, so sorry if you wanted to see me drive the Cyclops again. I might do it in a future episode. Maybe I'll take the Cyclops further down. At this point, though, I'm leaning towards not doing it. And honestly, there's not a whole lot to see when driving the Cyclops anyway. It's just like... I mean, it's like driving the Seamoth, except a lot slower and checking multiple camera angles. Which, I mean, is kind of cool, I guess. But I'm not... Again, I'm not really into it myself. Uh, so yeah, this is me making the Cyclops shield generator. This is pretty useful if your Cyclops ends up getting attacked by monsters. Um... It's really only Leviathans that'll deal a lot of damage to your Cyclops, but if you do see or hear a Leviathan coming, you definitely want to throw on that shield generator there. Because, trust me, the last thing you want in the world is for your Cyclops to break, especially if you've got a lot of stuff in it. Um, if your Cyclops breaks, I know some of the materials for it scatter, but if you have, like, lockers on board with things in them, I don't know if those will actually scatter, too. Those might just be destroyed altogether. Uh, I'm not super sure myself. I've fortunately never lost a Cyclops myself, knock on wood. Um, <laughs> but I have had one run out of batteries, uh, out of power cells. Um, basically, the first time I ever made the Cyclops in my first file, I ran it, I took it down to the Lost River just because. I didn't even really have a reason to. I just wanted to do it. Um, <laughs> and I ran on silent mode the whole time because I was like, why wouldn't I run in silent mode the whole time? Well, as it turns out, running on silent mode takes a lot more power than just running the Cyclops normally. 
Uh, and I didn't realize that until my Cyclops ran out of power altogether. So fortunately, I had my prawn suit on board with me, but yeah, at that point, I still had my base up above here in the safe shallows, so I had to get out of my prawn suit, walk all the way back up here, make six power cells up here, and then go all the way back down to the Lost River uh, to make new power cells, or to put the new power cells into my Cyclops. So I would definitely avoid doing that if you can. It's not fun, would not recommend it. Okay, now here I'm in the Grand Reef um, because I'm looking for... A wreck that's pretty close to the ghost leviathan we saw earlier. That's why I was kind of following it there. Um, yeah, there it is right there. Okay. And you should have been able to see it earlier. I just was busy rambling and didn't really pay attention. So yeah, here's the wreck. Like I said, it's just east of where that ghost leviathan is. Um, and this is where we are going to find the prawn suit's grappling arms. That was a drill arm we saw right there. Uh, but the grappling arms should be around here somewhere. Um, okay, there's one right there, I'm pretty sure. Nope, that's another drill arm. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think they're... I don't think they're inside. If I remember right, they were just kind of, like, around... Somewhere outside. Maybe I did go inside. I actually don't remember it too well. No, I don't see them. But this is the wreck, wasn't it? I wouldn't have left this done otherwise. Oh yeah, I think they are inside because I'm pretty sure this is the part where I was like looking for an entrance. Again, keeping an eye on that ghost leviathan. Although we're pretty far out of its spawn radius, or like it's uh like the range that it, like it's patrol radius, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, we're pretty far out of its patrol radius at this part, so we don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, let's see. I think we should find it pretty soon here. Oh, yeah, because here I found... No, I found what I thought was an entrance. Huh. Surely I left the right clip in, didn't I? Oh, yeah, here we go, because this is where I figured out... No? No, I thought that was a door handle. Um... Boy, I should have cut this clip down a little bit more. This is just me looking all around this wreck, huh? Um, but yeah, this is why I chose to kind of do some of the stuff in the way I did it. Like, uh, why I wanted to do it off screen, but again, I wanted to show... Okay, here's the door you can open. I knew I'd find it eventually. Yeah, I want. I do want to show where you find wrecks, and I... I yeah, and then here we go. This is where the goods are, because there's two fragments in this small room right here. Um... Yeah, I do like to show myself getting these fragments, whereas opposed to me just, like, cutting away and then being like, by the way, I went and did this off screen. So I can at least give you, like, some kind of an idea of, like, where I was going to find this stuff. Um, cause I don't know. I, I, I don't, like, it kind of throws off the whole sense of continuity if I just, like, get a bunch of fragments offline. If it's just materials, especially if I've already shown where you can get them, uh, that I'm not worried about at all. Oh, and this part here, yeah, this is where I end up going to back down to Lost River. Um, because I realized I need to make some benazine. In order to make benazine, you need blood oil, which I actually haven't picked up yet in the game. So, blood oil is really easy to find. It's these red splotches that are growing off the kelp that go grows down here in the blood kelp zone. Hence why it's called blood kelp. Um, you want to be careful because blood oil is really big. Um, it's, oh jeez, got attacked by another warper there. Um, this one I didn't even really bother circling around. I just decided to make a beeline for the sea moth and just get out of here. Um, but blood oil is a lot like the, uh, kelp from the kelp forest and the kelp seed clusters in that it takes up four spots in your inventory. So just be mindful of that if you're going to pick some up. Um, and you do need three of it to make one bottle of benazine. So I went ahead and made the benazine as well as all the other stuff I needed off screen. Uh, in order to make the prawn suit arms. Yep. Let's see, this is me making the grappling and drill arm here. And yeah, we can finally outfit our prawn suit with some sweet upgrades. Now here, <laughs> here I actually did something kind of fun that I didn't even know you could do. I ended up dropping them out of my inventory. Uh, which again, I, I didn't even realize you could do that, but... 
I panicked there for a moment because I thought to myself that I thought for a moment I was going to have to make them all over again. But nope, you can just pick them up and yeah, now you can see our prawn suit is fully upgraded. Well, not fully upgraded, but its arms are now fully outfitted. Uh, that's the drill arm there, and I haven't really pointed them out too much, but you've probably seen a bunch of like larger versions of um, you know materials we use for crafting sitting on the seafloor. Uh, with the prawn suit drill arm, you can actually bust those open. Oh, this is also me showing off the prawn suit's jump, which is really, really nice. See that purple bar down there is how much jump you have. Um, in any case, yeah, those uh, large material deposits, I guess you'd call them, uh, you can now bust those open with the prawn suit drill arm um, and just get them like so. And then I want to end the video off here by actually changing the name and color scheme of our prawn suit. Now I thought for a little bit about, you know, I figured, well, if I'm going to name my prawn suit something, it should probably be after a mech suit, right? And I thought for a little bit, I actually haven't seen that many mech animes, but of the ones I've seen, I knew I knew pretty much right away which one what I want to name it after. Um, you can see here, here we name our prawn suit the Big O. Um... I really, really enjoy that anime. A lot of people are like, yeah, that anime is just really weird. Um, it's kind of like a cross between like a mech anime and like almost like a film noir. Uh, it's got that kind of a vibe going to it, uh, but I really like it a lot, so I figured, why not? Name the prawn suit after it. And I decided to go with a black and red color scheme. I originally, I originally was going to go with yellow because the inside of the big O is more yellow, but I didn't like the way it looked, so... Yeah, I really, really like the way this prawn suit turned out. It looks really cool. Um, oh, I was about to just end the video. That's right, but I was like, oh, I should give myself a chance to say goodbye. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Subnautica. Uh, in the next one, we'll go ahead and start exploring below the Lost River and see what waits for us there. Hexlax signing out.